So we're building this rear end here. You want to build my rear end? Ooh. <laughs> I need to plug this rear end. Um. Hello, my YouTube friends. Remember that one time when I said we have to go to my other garage to get the spool because we forgot it at the other garage? And then I went there and then I realized that it's probably in the trunk of the car. This key doesn't like to work in the trunk very good. Oh, look, the spool's in here. Anyways, we have the spool in here. We have the pressy thingy majiggy to press thing thing majigs. And we have the axle. So we can start doing spool things. As you can see, our welding came up pretty decent there. No cracking or anything. Yet, anyways. We've got to press these bushings out because we have like some cool Team Z thing to go in there. And uh, let's get started. First thing we must do is put gloves on my meat beater so I don't get them dirty. Then we need this thing so we can get the ring gear off it. This thing has served me pretty well over like the last probably eight years. But let's see if it'll disappoint me like I disappoint Virginia. Nope. All these bolts can't be reused. These bearing rings are definitely more good. You know what? I actually don't have a hammer in this garage. But you always have a hammer if you have a thing that looks like a hammer. And this is garbage. Also, I've been getting quite large, so I had to take the top button off from my pants. With all the gyms closed, I've just been eating through my cocksucker all day, and then obviously it has to go somewhere. Not my penis, though. Sad. So, this is our ring gear on the spool, and sometimes you just have to be innovative when it comes to torquing things. Because I have nothing to clamp this into, I'm just going to use this press as a sort of a thingamajig to hold the spool while I torque it. A couple steps up to 100 foot pounds. Gonna be high. So we got it set up. I got it set where we have a uh, 12 thou backlash on it. This is the back side. This is the front side. I'm not too, too sure about it. I'm not really good at reading patterns, so I'm gonna look it up, see what happens. I didn't change pinion depth because I wasn't changing out the rear gears. These are the same rear gears that were in it. So I was hoping to get lucky on pinion depth. So I'm gonna look it up, see what's going on in here and then uh, see if we're good or not with that. I think I'd rather be a little bit too loose and too tight with this rear diff. I'll just use like some nice fluid in it. I can't get the pattern perfectly the way I want it. It's kind of like heel on one side, toe on the other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start fresh. I'm gonna take the pinion out. I do have a dummy bearing. I have a spare bearing. I have all the pieces I need to change the pinion out. I just didn't want to do it. So we're gonna do it anyways and uh, see if we can get this off. And that's the wrong size. Good start, Kyle. Yeah, it's kind of sad. You can tell that it was a new uh, pole setup. This is a seal's brand new as well. Sad. Also, I found a hammer. Why was that so hard to get out of there? I was beating on the nut that's not replaced, not reusable anyways. Suck it. Oh shit, sexy's coming! Bam! Look at him, Titty Tuesday. It is Titty Tuesday. Bam! This is some thumbnail style stuff. <laughs> so we're building this rear end here. You want to build my rear end? Ooh. <laughs> I need to plug this rear end. Um. <laughs> I don't actually, I just wanted to see. <laughs> if I was able to <laughs> plug this rear end. Um, right now I'm waiting on Tokyo to go grab the puller thing for this so we can get this pinion bearing off so we can get the right depth. And then we can do backlash and that's why I had yellow paint. You can get the face. right depth? Yes. That's what you just did. But that's The right depth so you can hit the right spot? Okay. <laughs> Tell me how I need to pose. 
You're gonna be my new director. You're replacing Sullivan for now. Okay. He's not Stay replaceable. He's not replaceable, but you're replacing him just for right now. Okay. Temporary. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna beat the piss out of the seal to get that. Mechanic. You really know how to pop it out. Mechanic. Oh, diff fluid smells like your butthole. What the heck? <laughs> Delicious? <laughs> now we gotta pop these races out. Actually, is that a pumpkin bearing, I wonder? There's two different style bearings that come on these pinions. And if you have the race to one already in there and you try and measure it with a different one, and it's not the same style bearing, then when you go to put the real bearing in, it says lockup bearing. It ends up being wrong. But that does look like the same bearing to me. Can you not just check the number on the bearing? I can, but it's on the back side. So it's on Damn. the underside of that bearing. So when I pull this one off, you can see that this one's actually ground out. This is our test bearing because in order to get the right ping in depth, you actually have to put shims underneath this bearing. So what you do is you use a dummy bearing and the dummy bearing sits on top of the shims. That way when you bolt it all together and it's wrong because it's bound to be wrong, you can just slide this bearing back off instead of like ruining a new bearing again. Yep, I got you. That's cause you a smart cookie. So we should be good to go once we get all the tools and we don't have them. So I'm just gonna I got something else for you to jack. Do a Captain Morgan pose. You actually got nice little freckles on today. Thank you. Show them your freckles. What? Can you see my freckles? Lower? You can't see them that high. Can you, you see go. my freckles now? <laughs> <laughs> I do it for you, boys! I'm getting it done. Tier 3 Discord, you get to see Bear Titty. What? Someone say something over there? It's not a lie. <laughs> yeah, we're just waiting on Tokyo. I was actually gonna press these ones out instead of beating the piss out of them with a hammer, because last time I did that, Virginia was like, cringe. It is so cringy. And then I pressed them out and it actually worked pretty good. But then I forgot the press kit at the other garage. Mm -hmm. It seems lately like three or four times an episode, I'm like, I forgot it at the other garage. And we don't have enough room for a lot of the stuff over here too, as you can tell. Well, that shelf can go in the basement. That's good for organizing stuff right now. I guess. Look at it. That's a good shelf. Why That's like the good kind, more? eight bucks. Well, then where else do you want to stick stuff? You want to put another shelf on the wall or something? Yes, I need to get, actually, how wide is this table? It's about that, that, oh, that wide. That table will fit right here. I think we've got a new workbench. Okay, where are we going to stick all the wall and stuff? Under the table. Look, <laughs> the table has a thing that, Oh my God! there's a right. gap under here. There's a gap under that. here. <laughs> That you can fit stuff. I'll show you my gap. <laughs> what the heck is going on right now? There's so much sexual going on. I'm just out in the garage and she's like, she sent me a photo of what sheets. Maybe. I can prove it. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I know how to take care of this, <laughs> okay? What else can I do while I'm waiting for Tokyo? I could probably weld a bung in this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and weld the bung in this. So, this goes like this. Where's a good spot for an IAT bung? I don't know. That was pretty useless of you. Yes. Cause I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. IAT. H E I T. It's a bung, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, go, I'll actually go grab the bung so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, hey! Road ass! Road ass! Oh my god, it's stuck in there so good. Your bung is stuck in there? Stuck in my bung hole. This is my old bung hole, right here. And our new bung hole should be a lot better looking than this one. Mm, I hope so. Why is it bent? I hope it still works. Anyways, this is our bung. We need a bung hole for it. I'm thinking somewhere like right here, maybe? That's probably why it's bent. Come now, Virginia, don't make me wait. 
Jack when the girls start much too late. You make me wait, if anything. That's why I had to take care of business by myself. You I didn't make me wait to tonight, and I said, you know what? <laughs> I'll, you'll be dessert. I'll just do myself for the full meal deal. I had to and do a CrossFit workout, and I was tired, okay? <laughs> This is the piece I need. You didn't even cut it straight though, did you? Yeah, there's just or edges just on it. I have to grind out. There, now we got a bung hole. It definitely didn't come out the best. But well, it, then your other one, though. Yes. Aluminum's a weird one. If you don't get enough heat into it, it doesn't want to do aluminum things. Mm. But if you get too much heat, you just... It melts away. It melts it away. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Now she's going live on stream, so you guys are all going to miss it. Bye. Bye. Nice joker. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Teal. I'm going to watch your butt as you leave. You're right. <laughs> Bye. So there's our new bung, and uh, we didn't drill out our hole for our blow off valve yet, so that's what we'll do next here. Here's what we got around two. It's more in the middle on this side, and then it definitely moved up from the middle on this side. It's a little bit higher. It is still like the whole bottom part section here, but the backlash is right around 10 thou. I can hear somebody! Oh yeah! Look, I can see and smell burning oil. It's too short, then it might not close all Yours is too short. I, whatever. We we'll just fries. replaced the throttle cable because the old one had those frays in it. So, plugging his laptop just to make sure he gets 100%. I don't know why, because I know it is 100%. But At least my balls are big. How's it up. feel? Better. Better? Wait, you said small balls? No, you said that you weren't work sure if Tokyo Falls were big enough to work. So we have to take one of the big springs out of the blow-off valve. I already took it out. This is the Black Sheep 60 mil blow-off valve. And Virginia's in here waving her flower. just came here to get this so we can press out those bushings in the rear end. Drop that one. Oh yeah, I forgot my inner fender came in. This is a taking up a lot of room rear, rear trunk here. The inner fender for the Mustang came in. And we still have the four Turbo Civic here, Virginia's Beetle, her Harley, and the mini truck. I thought about taking this engine and like subframe and cradle and stuff and putting it in the back of that instead of the RSX I have just for because this is already tuned and it'd be fun. My idea for this is still to put an engine in the back over top of the axles. I've had this for a while and I've had this idea for a while. I just never really got around to doing it because I only have so much room. But that was my plan. Virginia, this came for you in the mail. This big black thing. I'm just kidding, it's mine. This is our silicone tubing we're gonna put on our coolant pipes. That's gonna go on now. So we need three pieces to finish this off. And then we have some eBay clamps as well somewhere, right here. And we'll see if we have enough of these. It comes with five, but I need six. Sad. I know I've been slacking, this is my first day off, so technically I just work six days which is why you haven't seen an episode in a little while. Let's do it, yeah. So, 
This is our one that we warped because there was a gap on the top and I didn't clamp it and then I tried to fill the gap and it pulled it. That's how off we are on the top part. So that would have been a big exhaust leak there. So I'll just order a new clamp. We'll cut this flush off with this clamp and then it might have to be adjusted a little tiny bit either way uh, to get this to fit back up where it was. I'm so good at masks. I bought this kit being like, yeah, I could probably use these for my hose clamps because they were cheap on Amazon and I didn't have to go anywhere. I could buy it for my lazy ass on my couch. Nah, they too small. This is like, it's girthier than I thought it would be, but like I'd measure with my hand and it was like the same size and then I measured the clamp. I mean the thing with my, you know what I'm getting at here. So this is essentially what's gonna be like here. I did use a piece of smaller hose here because it was a tighter fit on the neck because the neck is slightly smaller than this 1.5 inch. So I have to get some hose clamps for that. I need to get the radiator cap. Um, I was gonna steal the one off the Civic. I forgot to grab it while I was there. And then I need to get some RTV for this because there's supposed to be a gasket as well as our thermostat. We did get a Mishimoto like 170 degree stat here. With that being said, we're gonna pull our wastegates off and then we're gonna pull the turbo off so we can get this gasket in here to make sure that all our exhaust leaks are sealed up. There's no firings in the wastegates right now and we have to put the other lube in, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Twins are always better. Look at them pipes. Look at them pipe. look at them welds though. Almost like I knew what I was doing, but I actually didn't know what I was doing. The lighting in this garage is still very mediocre, so we just have to deal with that for now. Okay, here we go. That's what Mario would say, I think. Mario, Mario, whatever Virginia wants to call it today. Oh, Nick, Nick did actually send two of these to Matt at Sloppy Mechanics, and he did do like a disassembly unboxing video of these. And you'll notice that they're actually um, not bad to pull apart just by holding down on them. And that's because with the piston and how tall this bore is, you can actually put the right size spring in it and you don't have to like put it in a vise to be able to push it down. So that's kind of a neat feature of these. And with that being said, after uh, Matt did his review on the wastegates, first batch had already sold out. The second batch sold out of 45s and I think there's 13 60s left and uh, the next batch is on the way. So we're on the third run already, which is kind of crazy because this is like a built by racers for racers kind of thing where like we don't want to jack up the prices because we want people to be able to afford them because we're racers and we know what it's like to buy like 700% marked up prices. Where these are like you, you kind of take a profit on them but you're taking minimalist profit where you can still like sustain the business but you want other people to enjoy the product as well which is kind of kind of like the coolest business model ever. You're not going to get rich but you're going to gain the respect of the peoples because everyone can afford them. You know what it's like? It's it's kind of like charging five dollars for a hand job. Sure, you can charge thirty, but if you charge five, more people are gonna do it, and then you'll eventually sell volume hand jobs. I mean wastegates. I mean, wait, what? Because it's an O-ring style and not a diaphragm style, you do have to lube the O-rings. This is the old lube that we were using. The new lube is actually like a darker gray and it's uh, it's got a higher temperature rating than this stuff, which is why we went with it. But that's kind of cleaned off. I'm gonna clean both of these off and then the new stuff, I can't actually show you um, who manufactures it, but this is the color of the new stuff. I'm gonna call Nick instead then. This is like the first time I've ever called anybody and nobody wants to answer me. I'm kinda stuck on what spring I wanna, wanna run. I don't really wanna run a 14 PSI base spring, but I also don't really wanna run a seven. So I might run the seven and the five together, which will give me 12, which is like a good number. I was thinking like 10, because I wanna make 800 wheel on like pump and boostane or pump and like the octane additive stuff. Maybe we'll throw yellow in there just to say screw it, 14 PSI minimum. Yeah, need your opinion on springs. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, you can always turn it up. You got a boost controller of any kind? I'm gonna put a Mac valve in it. Yeah. But can you only double the base spring pressure-ish? Roughly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're definitely gonna wanna run 
you know, I was going to say, can you run that five and the seven pound together? I think so. It'll make somewhere around 12. Yeah, that's what I would probably And then 800 wheel, probably roughly like 24 pounds of boost on an 80 mil, maybe? Yeah, I would think somewhere in that range, yeah. Okay. It, it'll probably take mostly all the boost to make it, I would think. It's kind of one of those things where I find, uh, you know, on the auto side of things, too, it gets really funky. Like, I did that Grand Marquis. Yeah. It only made 720 or 740 on 20 pounds on ethanol. Yes. But he ran 117 mile an hour in the eighth off the foot brake. That's a big car. That is a pretty big car. Well, I'm, so, that's I mean, what I'm thinking, too. I'll run the pair of springs and we'll run, like, 12 pounds base. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to run, you know, 20 plus pounds on pump gas octane booster, you know what I mean? No? I don't know. Uh, my experience with that octane booster is it's good for, good for a bit more, yeah. but not like huge more. Like it's definitely not race gas status by any stretch, you know? Yeah. You know, like I've, uh, I've done it on quite a few cars. And usually, like, if I'm running, like, 20 pounds on pump gas, maybe I'll run, like, 23, 24 on that octane booster, you know what I mean? Like, it's good for, so if we're good for, like, 13 to 15 range, you know, pretty happily on pump gas, for example, you yeah. still might not want to run much more than 18, 19 pounds or something on that stuff, depending on how strong you mix it, right? So I'll, I'll put yeah. the 12 pound springs in it. We'll run pump gas and octane booster and then whatever it makes, it makes. Yeah. And, and, and if it doesn't make enough, then, then we'll put race gas in it. I don't care. No, that, that's kind of what my thoughts are because like 12 pounds is a pretty, should be a pretty straightforward place to start on, on pump, pump fuel only. You know what I mean? The other thing is like, uh, <clears throat> how, do, how do I turn it down on the launch then? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna run 12 pounds. <laughs> drop, much, yeah. drop, drop the RPM a little bit. I guess, yeah. You know, take timing out of it. You know, yeah, Same yeah, exactly. I mean, the nice thing is, I'm sure we can figure out a way to do a, you know, a timer with some emission retards built into it and stuff. Yeah. Actually, Anyways, I don't want to take your time, Broskies. Okay. All right. Have, have a good day, one. man. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Yeah. But. So as you guys just heard, we're gonna run the pair with five and seven pound springs. Um, they are color coded, they are in the box here. So we'll get those put in. And also good thing I was screwing around here because I believe this came out of the blow off valve that I missed. This little tiny piece, it's the adjuster for the top screw that pushes down on the diaphragm style thing. So that blow off valve has to come apart again too. I'm sorry for rambling so much this video. I feel like I just need to tell you guys everything because I'm so hopped up on caffeine to be honest actually probably like a red bull and a caffeine pill to get me through the day there we go all looped up kind of messy but it's all on the inside and then 12 pounds of spring on, on the inside as well this one uh roughly 14 it all, it all depends on like your cubic inches and your back pressure and stuff as well but um, this is roughly 12 pounds once again just to show you how easy it is to push down um once we have this in place, because normally a 12 pound spring, like a one bar spring on another wastegate would be super hard to push down. This one, you just gently push down. If memory serves me correct, this little nipple type thing belongs right underneath that screw. And this thing actually screws like on top of this. So it doesn't mess that up. So that, then this. Yeah, this piece goes in there. We have coolant lines. Those are all buttoned up. Wait, is that one tight? Yep. So they're all tight. But you know that thing where like, you put it somewhere and you keep like tossing it out of the way because it's always in the way? And then you go to find it and it's not there? Well, that's my T4 gasket. So my buddy Murphy's gonna go see if he can find a T4 gasket for me. And then if he can, we can bolt this up. Bolt that up, the gates up, the tubes up. And then we should be able to run it and get up to temp, bro. Bro! Yeah! I don't know. Shive on. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Let's try and fill it up with the garden hose. So there's a little bit of hagger going on here. 
This is uh, our one eight or quarter inch MPT plug for now. The boys are putting on our warped downpipe. We do have the other flange for it. We just didn't put it on yet. How much do we need to force this again? A lot. Um, <laughs> lift up on sure. your end. But now we got the coolant plumbed up. We got all our clamps on, so all our intercooler piping is tight. Uh, the wastegates are on, and the downpipe is on. The only thing that we're missing is a T4 flange. I don't know what happened to mine. So gasket, gasket, gasket. Yes, T4 flange gasket. <laughs> Sad that the, the flange doesn't so sound so stupid. The, the flange is most certainly there. Um, don't tighten that too much because you'll just warp it. Yeah, I'll just screw up. Yeah. So technically, if I turn this key no. forward, oh, the key's in the trunk. So put this in the ignition. I gotta make sure it's in park as well because the drive shaft isn't hooked to anything. Oh yeah, and it's still under there. Yes, so that's in park. Ooh. Okay, here, hold this. This is how we have to start it, this red wire oh, right here. Oh right, yes, yes. This wire right. gets the sophisticated security. Yeah, it, it was stalling out around like 170 degrees there. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't let it fuck. But we don't have a rad fan hooked up, so it's only going to get... I wouldn't worry about it too much. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah we're going to fill it up, right? We're going to dump it at some point anyways. Probably, yeah. Whoops. You're getting everything all wet on the floor too. And my Denali mat. Dude, that's like a $100 mat right there. Right? My knee mat. It's for my knees when I do blowjobs. That's how you got wet sneeze, boy. <laughs> Dude, that ran good. That's like probably the smoothest it's ever run. And I don't know why. Because we didn't really do much. <laughs> no, it sounds, Less back pressure. It sounds good. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds real good. Yeah. Sounds like the canvas. And it looks real good. Like, the fact that I built all this in the front here. The whole intercooler and the piping and the downpipe and the coolant pipes. Did a thing. It feels, feels good. All right, so we're gonna end this video right now. We just need like a T4 gasket in the front and then we gotta finish our rear end and put that in the back. I think I'm just gonna put it in without putting the mounts in just so we can get it running and driving. Um, but I'm timing this out, so I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna edit it, and I'm gonna upload it and I'm gonna time it exactly so that when you get to this point, we're actually gonna be online on Virginia's Twitch channel if you wanna come hang out with us and live chat. So it's twitch.tv backslash alien trash cat, I believe. It'll be the first link down below. And then uh, head there, me and Virginia will be live because she likes to come out here, help me with live videos. I like to go in there and help her with her stream. Teamwork makes the dream work. 
And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna be on there for probably a couple hours tonight and you guys can come chat with us. We'll have a couple drinks. We'll talk about titties. It's Titty Tuesday actually, so titties are probably gonna be out. So peace easy and good day.